Go on, Dalek. Have we got another question? Yeah, yeah. this is a really interesting question because I've heard some kind of rumors that uh, that campaign, the campaign in this one is gonna it's gonna have some sort of choices. So the question yeah. here is: Will the campaign be scripted as all campaigns have been in the past, or will we get choices which affect what happens in the outcome? Now that's never happened in a Call of Duty. Just to interject, yeah. that the idea of the choices you can make initially Even affect your heads. output. Yeah, I said yes. You said yes. Wow. Yeah. Can you yes. say any more than just yes? Or? No. Of course he can. <laughs> of course he can. He can say yes, he can. No, he can't. Okay. Right. Um, Lark, Mark Lamia, the, uh, the, the, yep. the Activision guy from is, yeah. he, uh, he also mentioned that uh, a few times that that, that that will. So I'm safe to say I can agree with him. You yes. can just say yes. Right. Okay. I can say yes. He said yes. <laughs> I mean, and I'm going to root short leash for you guys, and I apologize for that, but. The, this is such a, a huge, a huge undertaking by Treyarch. I mean, it's the, it, Dave Anthony, the head of Treyarch, has got a set of balls the size of Kansas, man. I'm telling you, what he's doing, what he's trying to do with this, this storyline, with this game, with, with the whole, the whole thing is 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 enormous. And I, you know, kudos to Activision for trusting him to do this big thing. And so to respect that, I, you know, I'm really holding the cards real close to the Of course, vet. yeah, and I agree. I mean, well, we all want, we all want that because that's what we live for, you know, the excitement. You know, that's, that's, that's a good thing. We don't want to ruin it. You know. It's going to blow your fucking mind. It is just, it's stuff that's going to blow your mind. <laughs> um, next question. Go on. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, what made Treyarch go for a futuristic setting, and was there any inspirations towards that? Um... Again, yeah, you know, this can reveal. <laughs> what's great about what the but the guys at Treyarch and what's really what they're so smart. I mean, these are just really smart cats. Your answers exist in the world right now if you do the research. They're really good at giving you hints and clues and little things, but not it's never direct. It's never like right on the money. It's always off to the left, to the right. Yeah. Now, you've seen the the, the documentary with, with uh, documentary with um, Oliver North, right? Yeah. Yeah, and the guy, the guy who does the future weapons thing. Yeah, 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 yep. yeah. We've seen well, it. Yeah. Okay, there is your source. There is your source of storytelling right there. That documentary is up there not because it's you know because they think oh what a nice thing to have. Obviously, they're using them as resources. Follow that. So that again, they they really force you to use more than just your ears and your eyes. You got to link your got to use your sense of smell sometimes with this game. I mean, there's. I even go back to Black Ops. I mean, there's so many times. I remember the um, on Kason. How many times I heard this? You know, like, we can't get through Kason. I go, you gotta listen to Woods when I tell you to cover the bridge, cover the fucking bridge, stay there because every everybody. I bet you all the same thing. You left the bridge, you got killed. Left the. Yeah, I say cover the bridge, and then of course you leave, and somebody shoots you. Yeah. Then if you wait long enough, oh yeah, there's three VC coming. You gotta kill them. Then you move on. Yeah. You know. So if you're just obedient to Woods' voice in, in Call of Duty in the first one, you're going to get through this thing really fast. But there's one tricky moment. And this will give you evidence of how they, they give you information. Um, it's Kason. I run up. I, I get behind this barrier. A Marine, they're all on fire. He goes, uh, sir, we're, you know, our, our, ammo, our weapons cache is down there. We've been separated from it. And I look down. I go, those barrels, are they, are they full of napalm? And the Marine goes, sir, yes, sir, they are. And I turn to you. And I go, good to know. Marines, hold your positions. And of course, you'll know by now that to get through the level, you've got to use the napalm. Yeah. But yeah. that's how they hid the information. Good to know. See, that's good because it's not a directive, but it's a hint. It's a very clear hint. Yeah, see, that, that's what's so fun about these guys. They don't want to make it easy for you to get through it. They want to make it challenging. And it's like bragging rights. You figure this out. Oh, wait a minute. And when you start looking for these clues, yeah. they're everywhere. I mean, I got 14,000 lines, man, and every line is built to give you information. Yeah. I suppose that if you're deaf, you're fucked. But that's Fair, all right. Yeah. And <laughs> get what's called white noise syndrome where there's so much going on in the game you don't really listen intently kind of like you dismiss things you're hearing you know yeah. check your fl- you know, use the crossbow well fuck it most guys don't use it then they fl- you gotta use the crossbow so you know, wait you're, you're saying that those directives that you're shouting out those are actually scripted to make the gameplay easier yes because you're right you, when you when you're actually playing 
it's kind of ambient. It's kind of just generic noise, and you. you you that, don't really that, pay attention. No, you don't. Time. But I didn't actually know that that was, you know, because we play so much multiplayer, and that's very, very different. Whereby, um, especially in World at War, they were just calling out things that were happening anyway, and it was very blase. But I didn't know that you're actually giving out clues, like throughout. I'm giving you information how to how to fight a better battle, and even and even mm-hmm. multiplayer. I mean, there's going to be stuff coming out multiplayer that will informs your decision making. Yeah, you know. So there's it, it, don't again. I think I said that I did a video last night, and I said you you got to take everything as important. Take nothing for granted. You know, if if a play if a, if if somebody especially like in the last game when Woods was kind of like your tour guide. Yeah, you know what I mean. He's the guy that it, it, when he says something, you really should listen. You know what I mean? And now, even with this game coming, even the the trailer, you're like, listen to what he's saying. You want to know about the game? It's all there. If you're smart enough to listen with more than just your ears, you know. Now, what's interesting, and I'm speaking mainly personally, is that without this kind of interaction that you're obviously offering to the community, and thank you, by the way, for that, from everyone that's listening, thank you. Um, Thank you. You know, we, we don't get that sense of how much effort goes into these games we you know we assume there's a lot of effort on a lot of people's parts but hearing your kind of accounts of it makes it seem unfathomably difficult to complete a game like in terms of designing it i've never thought of all of this stuff would go into making a game that has um I don't know, it just seems to be now that they have, you know, I don't want to badmouth Activision because that's the last thing I'd ever want to do, but they've got money now. And you just think that, you know, they'd kind of roll over the Call of Duty franchise now because they don't need to make games that have a lot of thought in them now because they could make any old game and it would sell because it's Call of Duty. Well, yeah. well the thing is this, I, I don't know anything about Oh, what I know about is Treyarch. Yeah, yeah, no. Um, no I'm not going to badmouth anyone at all because well, they're, it's, they're it's, great. I, I don't, and I don't think you are. No, no, I'm not, I, no. I want, to, I want to elaborate on the point you made. They, There is so much commitment to the quality of their... Pro- Treyarch has such... Com- this is why I love these guys. I mean, they really know that someone's laying out 70 bucks. It better be worth it. Yeah. It had better be goddamn great. Not just... I mean, I had this, this conversation with Dave Anthony about three months ago, about a couple months ago, and we're sitting at lunch, and I said, you know, my my fear is that it's, you know, that it's... Just, Woods is just going to be good. He can't be good. It's got to be great. The stakes are so high right now because it's... it's you know, our legacy is at stake. This has got to be so good. And the chances they're taking, you, you got to take broad, huge chances. And, you know, to Treyarch's credit, man, they just... These, these boys work. I mean, I'll go in at 6 a.m. I'll work until 5.30. And they're all there with me directing. And, you know, we have, you know, you have the director of the, of the level. You have the animation guy. You have yeah. the audio guy. You have Dave Anthony, who's the head of the studio. You have a half dozen people there just watching it. You have all the technicians. Well, I pack up 5.30. I go home. These guys... They go back to Treyarch, and they still work for four or five hours more. And that's how it is for 12 months until the game's... I mean, when the game's launched, these guys shut it down for three months. I can't find them for three months. They all like, go away and, and just kind of decompose. Into the holes, yeah. yeah. There were guys, one of the writers, he was sleeping at the studio because it just you know had too much to do. And I know, I know guys, they would sleep right in the Treyarch studios because that's, you know, it, it, and they're so embedded. They're so like, they're, they're sort of been transported into this electronic world. I got, I mean, I love these. I have nothing but respect and, and, and admiration. I mean, they, I, I can only try to work as hard as they do. And I, I bust my ass too. I mean, this is, this is a big job. For me. I, I work really hard at this and it's, it pales in comparison to what these guys do. Now, you were talking about, you know, these guys that they... And I'm not sure if you know... You would, well, I'm sure you may do. You know, the, the whole future, uh, the ideas about the future and the sources that they've had from the future. Now, from what I've heard, um, there may be two varieties of future. Now, one you may not know much about, which, which is the zombies, which you're probably not allowed to say anything about, if you, even if you did know. But two futures that I see. The one that happens in campaign looks very um like if we were just floating along now until 2025 it looks kind of you know not dissimilar to what it looks like now whereas zombies looks like the world got absolutely fucked um and looks very dystopian very kind of 1984 which i like that looks gorgeous but it just seems strange that they would choose a path 
No, it doesn't seem strange. You just do you think that there was a creative? I, obviously, there was behind. What was the creative idea to make Earth look essentially what it looks like now? Because you know, there's still like Coca-Cola signs or cola signs at least everywhere. It looks kind of very civilized. Apart from there's a war going on right now, but it looks like you know, up until maybe months before that started happening, or the days before, it looked very civilized, very kind of. Um, Urbanise the people who actually live there. Looks uh, uh, potentially are just humans acting like we are now, just in the future. Whereas zombies, not not the same. Does not look the same at all. Um, do you think that there's a creative design in the difference between the two? Not that you'd know all that much because you're the campaign. I can, yeah, I, actually, I, I I know the guys who do the zombie stuff. I'll tell you what, yeah. there is nothing left to chance. There is nothing that is not sat down. No. Thought about, rethought about, re, 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 re you know, rewritten a thousand times. You know, yeah. I mean, like it's just the there's believe me, there's nothing left to chance. So every decision they make is a creative decision, and it's based on how. Again, I don't want to sound like a, a, a company guy, but I kind of am. They they really listen to the community. They take feedback. They say, well, what you know, what's working? What do people like? What do they don't like? Okay, we can do this, but we're going to have to give up this. You know, they really make very hard decisions on, on who, because everyone's got a different, you know, every asshole has a seat, basically. Sure. So, yeah. you know, and they, they can't honor everything, but they really take the what is the largest, you know, cumulative ideas. Like, oh, let's, okay, this, we need to do this, you know. We have 85% approval on this. Let's keep that. We got 10%. Let's dump this. So everything is thought out. It's all practical. And they, they really want to make the best experience for the player that they possibly can. And they, they're, they're committed. It's committed to this. So yeah, all this stuff is good observation on your part. This is all by design. I guess my and main, sorry, my main point coming back to the, the campaign, though, is looking at it now, it, as I said, it looked very civilized recently. I'm assuming that this, you know, you talk about what would it be like if the enemy had control of all of these horrendous killing machines? Is that, without giving anything away, and I don't want you to, so don't answer it if you can't, is it something that happened immediately? Because I'm assuming that there's a back catalogue and a backstory to, um, you know, as you explained, you know, Woods, how he survives, and, and it, there may be a progression into the future from the past in some way. Is this, without, you don't have to answer this, is the current climate the war or whatever it is that's going on and the media process or is it something that has built over time you can say no i'm going to answer your question with a question okay okay um can could you in, in your life all right things happen that you say there's no way if that, that was in a movie there's no way that'd be real true right? there's, yeah. there's story. Yeah. so go to school with that okay yeah, you know, that's li perfect. Li life is so much more <laughs> inventive than our imaginations. Yeah, life de life delivers things. So, I'll just give you that that you want. Right. Yeah. So th there's so much going on, and if you again, if you really dig into what's being said and think about every element that they're talking about, yeah. you know, break down. Take every every single word is accounted for, and it has meaning. 